there are three mathematical equations that form the kind of foundational fundamental backbone of not all but most of the data analysis techniques in uh, in neuroscience at least with regards to time frequency based analyses and so what i'd like to do here is introduce you to these three equations uh, what they look like how to pronounce them uh, how to recognize them and in particular how to um, how they're implemented in MATLAB. I'm not going to go into any detail about the derivations of these equations or what they mean or um, how they are used exactly in, in neuroscience data analyses. These will come in later lectures. We will go into uh, quite a bit of detail about each of these equations. But I think it's important to have um, uh, kind of an initial um, familiarity with these three equations. So if you can recognize these uh, equations as we go through and learn more about different ways of analyzing data and the mechanics of time frequency data analyses, uh, then you will be um, better able to um, kind of quickly uh, learn and integrate uh, the different data analysis techniques. Okay, so the first important equation is a sine wave. And the representation of a sine wave um, here is uh, and pronounced a sine 2 pi f t plus theta. I'm sure you are familiar with what a sine wave looks like. It's this kind of rhythmic uh, thing that goes up and down. It cycles up and down. Um, the A here refers to amplitude, which is the height of the sine wave. The F refers to frequency, which is the um, distance in time between uh, peak one peak to the next peak or one trough to the next trough. T here, so for um, time series analysis, the T refers to time, but uh, this equation can be generalized so that T can also refer to space if you're speaking of spatial frequencies. And theta is the phase, it refers to the offset or the, uh, the phase angle, the position of the sine wave when it crosses the zero line. The second important equation is uh, the Gaussian. And I'm sure you're also familiar with the Gaussian. It looks something like this. It's also called a bell curve or a normal curve or normal distribution. The Gaussian is pronounced e to the minus t squared over 2s squared. The e here is the natural exponent. Um, t again refers to time for time series analysis. And like with the sine wave, uh, it could also refer to space or any other dimension. But here we'll use it as time. S refers to the standard deviation or the width of the sine wave and it's a parameter that defines how wide the sine wave is. So you can imagine the sine wave being more narrow versus more uh, wide. So what I'm excluding here is also an amplitude that defines the peak of the Gaussian. We generally don't use this for um, uh, time frequency uh, analyses and also you could um, subtract a centering uh, uh, time point here um, otherwise this would peak at time zero so we will see this actually in the MATLAB code this is generally understood to be um, zero the centering point is generally understood to be zero which means we can just simply leave it out of the equation the third important um, equation or formula is called Euler's formula um, and it, it is um, and pronounced uh, m e to the i k equals m cosine k plus i sine k. <clears throat> and so what Euler's formula allows us to do is uh, two things. First of all, it allows us to um, easily move back and forth between different representations of the same information. Um, so more kind of Cartesian information and a polar uh, representation of, uh, of uh, information. And Euler's formula we also use to extract different kinds of information from uh, this uh, something called the analytic signal, which is uh, the, the step before uh, you extract um, power and phase and, and uh, bandpass filtered information during time frequency analyses. And so Euler's formula allows us to represent two pieces of information as a vector or as a line. We have m, which is the length of this line, so the distance away from the origin. Um, and we have, um, so that's M, and we have K, which is the angle with respect to this line here. And we will discuss in a future video that 
you can conceptualize this as a complex plane and so this can also be called the uh, positive real axis so this angle in radians would be k and this distance in um, uh, would be m okay so let's see how these three equations are implemented in MATLAB here we're going to create a sine wave we define um, frequency and amplitude and phase here we define the sampling rate which is 1000 so this is in Hertz and here we define our vector of time which is going to go from 0 to 3 seconds in steps of 1 over the sampling rate so in this, this case this is 1 millisecond so here's what it looks like uh, not surprisingly it looks like what you would expect a sine wave to look like I have some other um, uh, additional colored uh, sort of changes here to just so you can see how to change some things um, in the figure and in the axis and so on but these are all not necessary this is the really important part of this code here so you can see a sine 2 pi ft plus theta and this is the MATLAB implementation of a sine wave it's important for you to get some familiarity with this because you want to be able to look at a line of MATLAB code and even if you don't really understand what that MATLAB code is doing if you see something like 2 pi ft then you should recognize ah, okay this is something relating to a sine wave and that's how you will be able to understand and interpret um, uh, complex uh, lines of MATLAB code or difficult uh, lines of MATLAB code alright so here we will plot a Gaussian here I define the width which in the PowerPoint slide I um, I use the, t the parameter s so here I'm using the variable name width and here is this peak time which I didn't include in the equation uh, but here I'm setting the peak time to be 1.5 seconds so here's our Gaussian you can see now it is peaking at 1.5 seconds here's the MATLAB implementation of the uh, the Gaussian function uh, so the natural exponent e to the something is implemented in MATLAB as um, exp the function exp and then the input would be the x the exponent so e to the minus t squared is implemented in MATLAB as exp and then parenthesis minus time squared so you can see if we would set peak time to be zero then it would just drop out here and we would have e to the minus t squared over 2s squared so now if we set this to um, zero and run it again uh, you can see now you only see half the Gaussian because it's peaking at zero so I could have defined time to start at let's say minus two or something or um, I just decided here to um, set the peak time to be uh, in the middle so we can see the entire Gaussian finally we have Euler's formula here I define M and K so this is the length of the line and K is the angle and here I just define it to be pi over 4 here is the MATLAB implementation of Euler's formula we have M e to the i k and i is the uh, complex operator it's the square root of minus one that's something we will discuss and uh, and learn about in a future video so um, M e to the i k gets implemented in MATLAB as M exp uh, uh, i k or one i k okay and here you see this in a polar representation to be honest this uh, this step was really not necessary because when we extract the angle from the result of Euler's formula uh, that actually is just uh, our variable k which I defined here and the magnitude uh, which is um, implemented here as ABS again we will discuss this at great depth in a future video this is actually just the M variable that I defined here so this was kind of an unnecessary step but I did want you to see what Euler's formula looks like in MATLAB code and so that's why that um, that uh, step is is in here again um, I think it's important for you to have some um, initial familiarity with these three important equations because they will come up over and over again and so the better you are able to recognize these uh, equations both in in their mathematical expressions and 
um, for data analysis, more importantly, in uh, their MATLAB implementations, the better you will be able to understand and integrate the uh, different kinds of analyses that we will uh, that we will be learning about.